Alrighty, all right, here we go. Uh, so today, we're just gonna be doing a, a little bit of, of some soul searching, if you will. I've got, for for us to try out, I picked up a bunch of decks, very cool, very excited. A lot of them are, are somewhat similar, like our control are gonna play fairly similar. Uh, the, the Rakdos aggro is what we've been doing thus far. Uh, aggros are gonna be about the same. Red deck wins is very fast. So that's, that's like a thousand feet up, just a brief description of each of the decks. Um, we will try to play each of them today. I don't know how much we're going to be able to do with any individual deck. We might just play, you know, one or two games and realize this is the one we love, uh, or, you know, something like that. But as far as deck lists, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of the ones that aren't Rakdos Agro before we begin. So if you are interested, you can see what's going on there, just in case we don't get to see all the cards that are playing. So, this is Gris uh, Grixis Control. Grixis being black, blue, and red. That Grixis is just the term for that. It's uh, It refers in lore to a specific geographic area from a specific slice of the lore a few years back. Um, but for the purposes of deck naming, Grixis is black, red, and blue. So that's why it's called that. This is something that we've seen a little bit of already. Um, a few times we've been hit with this deck. Uh, this is actually, I have not seen this card played. It's a it's a board wipe, which I think will be pretty effective against some of the faster decks in the, in the format, like the red decks and the black red decks. So I'm excited for that. Also excited to play this guy, because this guy has killed me a couple times. So it'll be fun to be not on the receiving end of that. Or this guy too, uh, with his fun little, uh, fun little bug face. And you can just take a look at that that list there. The lands were actually the most difficult thing to get together, just because it is so demanding with those three colors. So you can see we have like a whole lineup of lands here, trying to make sure that you are always able to play the colors you need in a combination that you, you know, can use them. Okay, so that's Grixis Control. Now this one, the naming convention, I have a friend who is way into angel cards, and her, her online name is... Severa, so or Se Severa. I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. I hope you never see this because that was a butchery of a name that uh, I just cannot say. Uh, so this is pretty aggressive as well, very similar to the Rakdos Aggro. But what I like about it is this card right here has that hex proof, which means it cannot be targeted by opponents, spells, or abilities. Uh, specifically for black and of course if you're reading the uh, uh, the screen right there in the middle it does say that but it doesn't say it with the emotive and uh, powerful language that I just use it also kind of looks like I was gonna say it looks like this person's riding a unicorn which is fantastic but it is just their lance so false alarm on the unicorn there this curves out into just a bunch of angels what I mean by curves out is the game has a curve to it the beginning is your one mana. Second turn is two mana. Hopefully, unless you're not drawing the lands. But that upward curve of mana results in a curve for your deck. So we've got a three mana spell here, your four manas, your four manas, it, and it curves out fairly early at your fours and your fives uh, to deal with some of the more aggressive decks, but it has a nice early curve presence with your Knight of Grace. So when I say early curve, you actually see it demonstrated up here in the top right right below the deck name it gives you an idea of what your curve looks like and even gives it in a helpful curve shape it's uh that's great it's a great touch that's actually probably the one we're gonna be starting with uh this one similar to your your grixis control i'm actually gonna cut that and add another essence scatter Reason being, I'm afraid of a lot of early game presence, uh, particularly from your red decks and your red-black decks. So if we are going to play this one, I think it's important to have a lot of your creature counters. But we've seen this a lot. This guy, we've seen him a lot. Lost a couple games to him, which is fun. This guy, seen him a couple times. Uh, it's your basic control deck. Curves out fairly high. And the reason for that is you are just trying to prevent your opponent from playing anything, which is why playing against blue is a literal nightmare. 
but playing as blue is a real good time because you get to decide how much fun your opponent is or is not having um, and the lower that fun value is the better you're probably doing in the game uh, you just cancel all their stuff they're not getting anything to land and at the end of the turn end of the game when you're at your top of your curve you just play something that's just huge and will win the game in a few turns so that's control. That's our Esper control. And our last one, red deck wins. Blisteringly fast. 19 mountains. To put this in perspective, most decks play with about 23 lands. This is four lands under because its curve ends at three, which is extremely low. That means by turn three, you are basically able to play everything and anything in your deck. It's great if you're getting if you're hitting that. You know, if you're playing multiple cards a turn, if on turn three you're playing two or three cards. If you get to turn six, though, your opponent will be at the top of their curve where they're very powerful, and you will have probably petered out. So, man, this guy's ugly. Anyway, that is the deal with red deck wins. So, we have an, a buffet of decks for you to see today. A smorgasbord of goodness. And I want to just... Today, we're not really going to be trying to grind up that ladder. Uh, of course, that's always on the back of mind because this is the quest for glory. And glory is always the primary goal. But today, we just want to kind of figure out the format a little better. Try to play some of these decks. Try to get in that mindset. See what we can do uh, on, the, on, on the other side of maybe a control deck to figure out how, when we play with our main deck here, our Rakdos Aggro... Um, what do we have to do to counter that, to, to, to get through that? So today is a day of learning, and that, not that any, every day is a day of learning, but today is a double day of learning, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you guys are excited. Guys, Guy Singular, looks like we have one, one viewer. Shout out to you. You're doing great. Um, we're just going to put this together. We're going to put it out there, and we're going to see how it goes. Get a flavor for the, uh, for the format. And we're going to start... With this one. Now, a little bit of background on this deck. It's actually been put together specifically for Magic Arena. Uh, the reason for that, the reason I say that, and the reason they say that, is because it has a high first game, one game win percentage. Which is all you really get, or not all you really get, is all you get in... Yeah, this is great. See how our curve? See how we have two, two three three and we have three lands to get there this is a great opening hand because it matches the curve of our creatures to our to our lands this is great of course i say that we might just get stomped um i do find there's an awful lot to say for who goes first so i could cycle this is what i'm thinking right now cycling would discard this card i draw a new card but i don't have any removal in my hand and we'll probably want this. So I'm just going to keep it. Especially because I have other options. If I didn't have any of these, if I had a whole bunch of removal, like a seal away, and then this, and then, you know, just nothing but removal, I would want to cycle this. But that's not the case. The fact that this opponent's deck is actually a little bit slower is great news for me. He also doesn't have a counter, which is essentially what Knight of Grace is... I was going to say allergic to. The, the the weakest spot of Knight of Grace is if it gets countered. Because if it can't hit the board, you don't get your first strike. You don't get your... Oh, that hurts. Well, he'll probably take Respondent Angel. Oh, he does have a tough choice right now because I have a great hand. Respond... Oh, what do you, what do you take? History of Benali... Okay, so he's afraid of an early game hard push. The question is, who do I do? I think I play this guy, just because there's no... But then next turn... So what I'm thinking of is how to maximize the damage I'm doing, right? Do I play this 3-drop or this 3-drop? Playing this one would make this 3-3, three, three, and the next turn I swing in for 6. Playing this one next turn, I still swing in for 2. But next turn I swing in for potentially, because I can play this one, making this a 4-4, four, four, for 7. So I actually want to play this one, and I'll do that after combat. I love a little, like, magic business going on with my guy here. 
Skadoof. Okay, and we play Respondent Angel. Perfectly executed. I, you know, I don't love a lot of the animations of the creature cards in this in this game, but I actually really liked that one. So, okay. Okay. So I will be exiling that next turn. Which do I want him to keep? Yeah. So I don't actually have to play the cast out because playing this creature, giving my other creatures plus one, plus one, will make them strong enough to kill Karn. And he's tapped out, so I am not worried about some kind of combat trick preventing this from happening. I don't know if you heard that, but when you attack Karn, he just shouts, please stop at you. And I, like that's that feels like the most human, real reaction to being attacked by a man on horseback. It is exactly what I would say in that tone. Please stop. That makes sense. I don't know. I like Karn. He's, he's cool. Okay. Yeah. So he's going to be killing one of my dudes. I don't know which one he's going to take, though, because they're all kind of an issue. Yeah, that one was the flying issue. So I think that was probably a fair choice. Okay. So I think I play both of these and then attack. Yeah. So we attack first. And the reason for this, it, it's just a good habit to be in where you are now m making the majority of your decisions after the game-changing events have occurred. So if he did something to me when I attacked and killed all my dudes, but I had played cast out and then I had no dudes, that would have sucked. I would have been kind of lost for next turn. However, because I attacked first... I would then be able to respond to that. So I would get to choose whether I play cast out or if I play my two creatures. Uh, and I, I do, did play my two creatures. Um, so that's what I did. And this looks pretty good. And he, he does not have a lot of you know business going on over here. So I'm not too concerned about this game right now. Uh, although that could change. You know, we could lose it. You know, I think that's that's one of the amazing things about watching this channel is you never know what's going to happen. It's like, it's, like that's a, he's a big guy. That's a beefy fella um, that we were worried about now. Oh, yeah, you're keeping the swamp, bro. Just battlefield. What's it do? Exile target creature. Okay, yeah. So what we want, um, we do want our dude back. Uh, well, we're just going to kill Karn because we can kill this with, or if we kill Karn with cast out, we're able to, I'm going to use a term here called the game clock, where how many turns of attacking him does he have? That's the clock. I can do six damage. He has 12 life. Six damage would kill him in two turns. He has a two turn clock. If I kill Karn and save cast out, he then has a three turn clock. So I'm going to. Attack him directly. Because that means next turn he will just lose. If he doesn't do something. So now he is on an extremely defensive turn. Each 
opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. See, now that actually gives him a, a, a little bit of space here. But it did actually... So, because he controls a black permanent, um, that triggers... I didn't even know that. Um, we're going to attack. So, unless he has some wild combat trick. He did have a combat trick. But he's still on that. He has one turn clock right now. I'm just going to play that. Because uh, that's preferable. We're going to lose this card next turn to his Eldest Reborn. Which I'll show you what that does. Each turn, the so it has a three turn... Th Sorry, his thing's happening. So each turn, the next thing happens. So on turn one the turn one thing happens. On turn two, sorry, the, the turn two thing happens and so on. So we're about to enter turn two where each opponent discards a card, which will be my planes. Wow, he has a lot of those. Okay. I would say I am still in a really good spot here on account of he has three life. Uh, so I could just, if he drew, I don't know, I, it, Gigantosaur 3.0 or what have you, I would still be in a great spot because I could still take a few of those turns. I don't know what the plan is here with Karn. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna exile. Yep. Okay, that's a bomb. This card. He's amazing. But he's going to make me exile it. That nincompoop. He is, he is just holding on here. Play the planes. I mean, if I get a cast out, if I get anything, I'm able to return one of my creatures and uh, do some work. Where's cards? Oh, it's still my turn. Oh, is it my turn? Or, okay, now it's his turn. Boo! My own lad. My own boy. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that would stink. That would be poopy. Oh, well, we still have a pretty... We have a pretty generous clock right here. So I'm not too concerned. But the board state did definitely just flip real hard his way. But all I need is a cast out, a creature, anything to uh, to hit him. You get that. All 
right? So I'm on a, I need to draw the card right here. That'll do something. He has to kill it right now. He got it. Wow. Wow, guys. That was Banana Town. I See, I feel like that's a little bit of an unfair comparison, though, just because... Just because it, it was the first game, so I do want to try a few, few games with it, see how we like it. We, I mean, it felt pretty good. We just... You know, it just didn't happen in the end there for us. And you just happen to have a lot of that really effective removal. I really like these fields of wheat. I would not have thought to make bread out of that. But someone did, and, uh, you know, I'm eternally grateful. Okay. Uh, so, same thing. We got a great curve. This is going to be very helpful if they are an aggressive deck. I also love his name. <laughs> it took me a second to see that. Baron von Dankenstein. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. So I don't know what this is. Is this like a weird? It, so it, it's a that graveyard effect is interesting. Is he gonna try to? Is he a mill deck? Is he trying to mill me? Mill is when you just grind out like a mill would. The opponents. Okay, it looks like there's some kind of graveyard play or something. I've not seen this deck before, so this is really interesting. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, we're gonna play this one. Just because then next turn I'm swinging with four. What kind of removal might he have? Okay. So I actually I have a new thought on this card. I'm not sure if I ever actually want to kill it. Because then it comes back as a huge beefy 4-4. Four four. That is not what we want. If he is a control deck... I am getting a lot through, which is helpful for me. Again, so would I, as I was just saying, I don't actually want to kill this guy unless I have to. So I'm not going to need more than one blocker for this guy. What does he have that plays stuff from his graveyard? Okay, okay. What does this do? Create a token and copy that card. Oh, so it's, he's he wants to make big beefy boys is the plan. But he's also tapped out. So what we'll do, Who who's in his graveyard? Is this a creature? Did he just die? Now what'd he do? Angel of Invention. Ah, okay. Oof, oofers. <laughs> oof, oof. I don't want to kill that one. This would be a 6-6, six, six, which would be great. But this would just kill all the stuff and exile it. So what I'm actually going to do is hold on for this.
If I play this, 6-6 six, six, could block that, get 6, get another angel. I think I do this. I think I wait. get him good here. <laughs> I'm excited. Wait, what just happened? Why can't I hit them? Um, what's the damage? Wait, wait, wait! Oh, see, that is where I actually dislike the interface on this because I, I had the block and it just didn't let me do it. We saw that. Big beefy boys. That's right, Jake. Coming in the section is big beefy boys, and that's correct. That's what happened to me right there. Well, I don't, I don't know when I'm supposed to play that if... We'll, we'll give it another go here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that if it's just not gonna trigger that wasn't my fault you guys saw that jake you saw that that wasn't me validate me in the chat <laughs> eastern promises okay that's cool so this deck i i like this deck i not 100 percent sure of what happened there in that last game uh but this game new game new me new hand who I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Okay. Now the hope is that I get a land. Or a, I should say a planes. Because it has to be another planes. But. Just something to... Whatever you cast on creature. What is that? Oh, the Sphinx. Okay. All right. Wasn't your fault. They had the boys. That's right, Jake. <laughs> That's right. What are you doing? Good. See, I'm holding this back until. Flying. Do I cast that out? Steal away, rather. Oh, it has to tap. So what a tap. There wasn't a lot of sound on that. That very silently happened. 
Um, so I wasn't sure if it was receiving that feedback, but um, it worked, so not gonna complain. Who's got the beefy boys now? <laughs> Now they're nowhere close, it, it, nowhere near as beefy. What? A, Blue Drake? Okay. Thankfully, I have plenty of flying to deal with that. Yeah. The reason I'm doing this is I don't know if he's a control deck, because he does have blue, so I do want to punch through while well, he only has one blue open. I want him to tap out again so I can land something else. Okay. Does that make sense? Oh, boo. But he is tapped out, so it's okay. Yeah. Now I've got this, but I do kind of want to stabilize the board before tossing that down. Maybe that's maybe that's dumb. I don't know. Cause he he's a pretty beefy boy. Is he legendary? Or is she legendary? She is. Cool. You got a counter. He does. He does. It looks like he does. Yep. Oh. Boo. Okay. All attack. Get in there. Mix it up. Why is it seven? We're gonna do this because whether he has a counter or not, I have another one. And if he does have a counter, this'll be it. Okay. Okay, so we burned that last counter. Now we are gonna, wait, why? Oh, it's the number of cards in graveyard. Okay, all attack. Now we do want him to play this. Excellent, that could not have been better. And this, you're gonna get another chance to shine. So let's see if you if you can pull this through for us. Um, yeah, he's tapped out, so we do wanna get this down. And this will trade with him. So this has first strike. First strike means that it does damage before the opponent's creature does damage. Meaning, if he attacks, I will actually deal my damage first. There it is. We had the beefy boys. <laughs> that can't be a thing. We can't actually make that a thing, though, because I think we're going to lose viewers for that. Or maybe it'll bring them in. But if we do bring them in, I don't think it'll be the kind of viewers we want. I'll be afraid of those people. Oh. But I can't open it. That's not... I do not understand. I do not understand the interface. Oh, here we go. Now we can open it. Shoop. All right, this is moment of truth. Cool, I guess. That's neat. This is... The Militia Bugler is actually the one that's catching my eye. One. That's terrible embouchure. You don't actually, when you're playing a, a brass instrument, want your cheeks to puff up. Dizzy Gillespie does that, but he has, like, a face thing. So that's... What's he doing with his hand? This guy... You know, I, he looks like he's a really tough guy, really strong soldier, but I, I'm not feeling the bugling vibes from him. The more you know. 
All right, so I I like this deck a lot. It's you know, it might not have enough removal. This is great, um, but I actually probably only want three of those. I want more seal aways. I don't know if I want this either. We probably want a fourth seal away. Because seal away is, is just so good. Just so good, man. Um, another, like, beefy creature. Or a creature that does the beefing. You know what I mean? What's interesting is this deck is, is positioned really well against red aggro. And that is supposedly the most go-to deck right now, but we've seen none of them in our in our playing today, which I think is kind of kind of funny. So this gets beefy, but we need something that does the beefing. White, so my favorite colors are have always been white and black, but it's rare for that to be a combination that's puff cheeks equals noob. You, yeah, yeah, man, he doesn't know what he's doing. I'm sure he'll get there someday with enough practice, though. It's tough to be both, I'm sure, in what looks like a fairly demanding military outfit and, you know, find time to practice your, your art like that. So I understand. It's that work-life balance. It's really tough to find. Even even in the magical world of Magic the Gathering, the work-life balance is tough to find. I feel that. Maybe I was too rough on him. That's pretty nice. That would fit pretty, pretty neatly with what we're going for. White vampires are so cool. pretty good. That's pretty good. See, I'm not going to have this happen very often. So these two look like they would roll together really well, but that's... So many of my creatures are the beefy boys uh, that that's not necessarily going to be something that I, I have the opportunity to do. It'd be nice to draw a card. And I'm just I'm just looking at what we've got to see if we can get I mean, maybe those those seal outs might have done it. That's pretty good. But it's kind of like it's too, the steps in order to make that happen are, are too many. So it's a little bit too complicated. Ixalan's binding is pretty great. Uh, but for four, man, that's a lot. That might actually be pretty good. Although, I don't know. I don't know. I think we try this. I think we try this. If that were like a three card, but it was four, so it was just sitting a little too high on the curve, um, that would have been great. But we're gonna try it like this now. Just those two more, um, two more seal aways, and it's gonna be great. Not a single seal will get through. Not today. Yo, this guy looks. Everything about that guy was was kind of aggressive and spooky, including his facial hair. Look at him; he's still mad. Okay, this is this is good land base. Um, not great in the creature front. It's okay, because this does get us moving towards card draw. So, we'll, we'll keep it. Ooh, and he's got a fast deck. So, it, it's 
quite literally, the thing that we did not want. Do we cycle? I need, I will probably need the removal, which is why I'm saying no. We're gonna need the removal, because here comes Burly Boy. You's, you've met Beefy Boy. This is Burly Boy, because he's Brontosaurus, so the, the bees really. Oh, I guess Beefy was there too, I don't know. He's Burly, just, there's nothing Beefy about this. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna another chance this game. Okay. Yep. Here it comes. I just imagine the brontosaurus like wallowing over like <laughs> in my mind it was really funny um, it, I know that the, the word picture there was not uh, that good but but trust me it was hilarious just to imagine that thing like what does he stop me or does he smack me with his big wonky head three damn honestly it could be the foot it could be the head either one would hit me for three I think I think it's the head though, because you got the four feet, right? Giving it that three, four, giving it the four value. Oh, uh, no, I'm not gonna block. Because I need this card, so I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. This card is way more valuable than that card. Okay, so I'm not too worried about his attackers this turn. The reason this is great is because it shuts down combat tricks. At least combat tricks that affect me. But we might want to do this. But we can just settle the wreckage and kill all these guys. All these lads. Ooh, but we want to draw a card. We don't need to use settle the wreckage this turn, so we can tap out. We don't want to use this, we want to save that. So the decision is between these two. I think it's this one, just because we want a more stable board when we play Karn. And we can attack. The reason we can attack is because we have our 3-4 blocker. Not quite a beefy boy at 3-4, but still pretty large. Been hitting the gym, been hitting that CrossFit. What are you? Do you have, okay. He does not have haste. Three, four, yeah, I'm gonna block. What you got? Yeah, he can't do anything. Yeah, that was, uh... oh, he had the land in the critters. I forgot about that. Okay, so now we do want the settler wreckage, but we're going to attack to try to get him to all in. What's great about Settle the Wreckage is because it doesn't target a specific creature. All right, exile all attacking creatures. I'm gonna just keep clicking this. Ooh, we'll exile that. And so the beginning of my next turn, we'll exile that. The beginning, in the middle of our turn, we will Settle the Wreckage. If it works, if it doesn't work, we just lose. Uh, so let's see. Needs to declare his attackers. Just one. Okay, no, I don't really care about that. Oh, 
I'll attack. The reason we're doing this is because I think he knows now that I have a settle the wreckage. Oh, there he is. The, what I call him? The burly, burly boy. Burly boy. Not beefy. Beef is cows. That's a brontosaurus. Jeez. He, so he knows that I have a settle the wreckage. He's playing around it. Okay. So now I can... Oh, you... That was the issue. You target the player. So I had to do that. Was not the best use of that card, but I had to get rid of that creature. Okay. So now, I want him to keep playing around a card I don't have. So I act as if I have it. <laughs> All right. So here's what we're going to do. We just have to act like we have settled the wreckage and see if he calls the bluff. I have a second one. And I need him to think that. I need him to believe that in his heart. Uh oh. All right. So let's see if our bluff is good enough to make him not win the game for a turn. Oh boy. Oh. That's a that's the beefiest boy. We've seen the beefy boy, we've seen the burly boy, and that is the beefiest boy. Yeah, he, he's not buying it, guys. <laughs> Let's see what we got. That'll be it. Maybe. Let's see. All right, here's the thing. If we actually draw... If we actually draw a set of the wreckage. That'll be it. That's all she wrote, folks. Oh... What do we need in that one? What do we need in that one? More seal aways, man. Fewer of these. We didn't need any of that. That's this is so long. Another one of you. For sure. I only had one. I was waiting for a card that I only had one of. That's funny. Alright. We're gonna try it one more time. We'll try this deck just one more time, then we're gonna switch off to another deck. And we'll see how this goes. All right. We're back in it. The green one was tough because it, it sits right where this deck might have the hardest time. And I don't love saying that as we see the other player has chosen a green Planeswalker as their avatar. But again, they, like I, may be just attempting the art of the bluff. This is good. I'm going to keep that um, just because we have our... Where are our Knights of Grace? Where have they been? Oh, uh, it's you again. But in a different form. Okay, uh, we'll just pass turn. See, going first is such a huge deal uh, because I'll be able to get this down just as he's getting down his first whatever, right? <sighs> Beefiest boy. We meet again. Settle the record just so good. If it works. Man, 
man. If he swings in with like six dudes and then... I actually think I do. I think I do block because I just need to get rid of his creatures. And then we can move to me playing big bad flyers. That's going to be super helpful real soon. Oh, we could actually mana starve this guy. See how he only, what that meant. See how he only has one forest and one other creature that creates mana? Using this to seal away this creature might not make a lot of sense, except then he only has one mana source to play everything. Which is actually great for us. Do we attack? No, because if we go to the long game, we end up winning. The late, late game. He's in kind of a late mid-range with his big... With his beefiest boy. Um, but... Yeah. Yeah, he's thinking I should have mulliganed. <laughs> I'd imagine. That's what I would be thinking in his position. Aw, oh, there he is. We do want this down, and right now I'm not going to be playing Settle the Wreckage, so I want to play this this turn. And the lifelink is going to make a huge difference over the course of the game. Lifelink doesn't make a big difference for a while. But over the course of a game where you're just swinging turn after turn and just picking up that life, it can. So he's got a combat trick. There's no reason for me to block that and risk my Dawnbringer. I, yeah, I'll take two. I will literally gain that back in a hot second. I think the decision to seal him away was actually... was really good. Claps for me. Just self-congratulating. All right, Unicorn Lad. Or Gale. I don't know. The helmet's on. All right. So we still have enough to do Settle the Wreckage. We're going in. Now, we are in the position where we're gaining so much life that we don't have to worry. So now he's on a one-turn clock, if nothing changes. We actually might not settle the wreckage, even if he did attack, because we don't want him getting lands. But I do want him to tap out. Alright, is he going to use the thing? Okay. Who? well... To get two lands. Be able to play some creatures, but I would save my dude. 
and nullify his combat effect. I know, I'm thinking, I see it. I don't want him to have the land. Okay. Wow, yeah, he, then I guess it's over. Don't know why he didn't concede. He probably just wanted to play beefy boy. I understand. You got a beefy boy in hand. You want to get him on the field. He had me worried, even tapped out, that something was going to go awry. Because that's just the kind of uh, kind of games we're having. Although, I, I like this deck. I like where it sits as far as in the game. Um, and I do like the choice to have put those, those extra seal aways in there. I really don't like Treasure Map, actually. Like, to a point where I might cut it completely, because it's so expensive. And what I mean by expensive is it's just a two-cast. But but it doesn't do anything until you've done so much with it. This actually might be super good. We're going to put three of these in and get rid of Karn. A one Karn, not all Karns. Because that is amazing against aggressive decks. And it's a life gain source. Which I'm not necessarily doing anything with the life gain, but it's okay. Just swag life. And I like to live my swag life. We're gonna do we're gonna do this game and then we're gonna go to a break for a little bit. We're gonna play for a while tonight, so I hope you guys are ready to get comfy. I actually just did laundry today. Life story with Dan just did laundry today, and I've got my freshly washed pajama bottoms on right now, and it is literally I mean this is why I live. I think this is it. This is the big the big takeaway of life itself. Meaning of life is freshly washed pajama bottoms. Man, that was... We went down a rabbit hole with that one. Woo! Hoo -hoo. See, it's random, but you almost have to question it, right? Like, turn three, I'm going to have some decisions. I'm going to keep it. If it's an aggressive deck, we lose. But I'm going to keep it um, just because... Ooh, is it an aggressive deck? I have three turns to draw a land. And I think I can do that. A poop ton of... And they're not really burly. They're not really beefy. They're just kind of svelte. They've, like, been to the gym a few times. So we've got our svelte... Svelte lads are out here. This deck is... Extremely in vogue right now. So we do have this. If he taps, we can do that. I'm not going to do that for that. If we don't draw any land, that would be pretty poopy. But, you know, we were able to bounce back so hard, so fast, that I'm not super worried. And it doesn't have removal. So my svelte lads will just be flip flapping around with their little wings. Yeah, there's a good target for the seal away. Man, I was quaking in my boots when they used to play these, and I did not have a exile target creature. Yeah, he, sw he swings. Oh, I am the luckiest man. Um, okay, so we're going to play one of these. He will swing with both. I'll take five on the nose. Seven on the nose, but 
then he'll be tapped and we can play this seal away. Or I'll take just five on the nose. What can he do? Plus two, plus oh. It's not good. We might have wanted to keep this, the land up for seal away. We actually might trade. We might, because it might be important enough to keep that life total up. It's a great target for Settle the Wreckage. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's get Trample. His Death Touch. Ooh. No blockers. I think we actually settle the wreckage next turn. I don't want him to know I have it, though. But obviously, if I leave four planes up, he's going to know I have it. So this might be the only turn to deal with the seal away. But then we get hit for another... Yeah, we got to... Do we just say, yeah, I've got uh, yeah, I've got Settle the Wreckage? I think we do. I think we just say, yeah, we got Settle the Wreckage. And hope he plays around it. Unless he doesn't know about the card. That's always kind of the, the, the thing in the back pocket, is he has no idea why I'm doing what I'm doing. Awesome. Ooh. That deals three damage to our creature planeswalker. That should kill this, right? Yep. Yep. Combat. Attack. Let's see what he does. Moment of truth. He's gonna do it. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oofers. He might, I think right now he's looking at that card to see what it is. The first time I actually saw this card was doing exactly what he just did. Of like, I just swung in, man. I just went for it. Yep. And now we, now we can start to kind of play the game again. We do have to deal with Sky Sovereign. Okay. So we will crew that. Yep. I wish I had just one more land. Yep. No blockers. So we can steal away. I think we do the same thing, three, but then go into the seal away if we have to.
So here's what I'm actually thinking, because he will just sacrifice this to destroy an enchantment. So let's kill it now. So then he has to decide which one he's going to do. He'll probably do this, hit me for three, swing for six. Then I can cast it out. Okay, I think that's the play, though. So we don't want this to be able to do that. All right. I mean, if he has another one, if he's got another burly boy, then he just got another burly boy. Yep. Is he going to shoot that at me or at Resplendent Angel? Yep. Hits for six. Do I lose because I can't get a creature up? So I need to draw Knight of Grace. Oh, boo! <laughs> and I need more... I need, I need more just kill target creature stuff. What do we got for white? Well, all right, we're going to take a break. It's probably about five minutes. Um, I'm going to look at this over the break, probably, you know, run to the restroom, all that. Uh, but this has been good. I think we have a good handle of this deck now, and I will probably be switching to one of the control decks uh, right after this. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in for this first half, and I will see you on the other side of the break. <laughs> 